Greetings, this is Greg again, and welcome back to my first idle game. Uh, if you've been following along, um, this lecture is going to build on what we've done already to this point. Obviously, you'll need to go back and watch the others if, if you're a beginning developer. Otherwise, you can probably just jump in anywhere and enjoy this series. Please, like always, click like and click subscribe. Click that little notification icon so you get notified when my lectures come out and my videos come out. And as I'm gonna remind you, this is not the course. This is the, I'm building the course. I'm working through the details in this course. And uh, it's to be released in the first part of uh, 2022, like uh, January. So uh, it gives you a chance to kind of see how I build these courses up and I work through them. In addition, we have a full book with this course as well um, that I'm gonna be referencing uh, here right from the beginning. Here, we've already got, you know, it running adding up gold, we can swap out enemy profiles. We are now gonna create an enemy area like level, an area manager, and then a profile for the area. And I'll just go ahead and, um, well, I guess I won't because I took a picture of that when I created it, so I will be rewriting that. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and get started. So to begin, I'll come here into our scripts, right click, make a C-chart script, and call it area manager, like so. And we're gonna create another script for our area profile. I don't know why it's making me do that. Go back and forth. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of all of our methods. And it's really common when I'm doing scriptable objects to blast the methods out. Now remember, I need it to say scriptable object up here. Instead of mono behavior. And remember also that we need to put this create asset menu at the top if we want to have a way to actually specify um, and create the create the actual data item on, on our physical in our physical directory and actually physically create the file on our computer. Now let's put the data that we need to collect here in our area profile. It's really simple. Uh, so I'm gonna say make a list of enemy data. <laughs> I called it in a me data and I call and I have to put it in between these ah enemy data have to put it in uh, between a less than a, and a greater than sign and I'll just call this available enemy profiles like that and with that um, it gives me this little yellow thing here because it does not match the rule um, because we haven't made this public yet. And, I, and again, we're going to refactor, which means go back and, and rebuild this to use better practices and better encapsulation, better, be, better um, rules as far as game development. Right now, it's about functionality. It's getting it up and going. And then along the way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be refining this so that it will be better code. But now we have an area profile that's simply just a list of available enemy profiles. That's all we need. So now let's come back here to our area manager and find a way to consume those. So the first thing we're going to need is to have to have a public area profile and call this, this is area profile, and we'll call it area profile. So we'll basically be doing kind of like we did with the enemies and just dragging a, a, an area profile in here until, you know, we come up with better mechanisms, uh, you know, iteratively improving things. So um, to get the enemy, well, we obviously want to basically grab a random value from the available enemy profiles. So I'm going to say... I can say var, and so this is a new component, a new a new term that I'm I'm uh, showing you. Var lets you take and return uh, in these local instances, like in these local methods, into a variable without having to define the type. So I can say um, enemy data, because it, it is enemy data that we're getting. Um, I'm going to say that that's equal to area profile dot available enemy area profiles. And um, that's the full list, right? And now we need to get like the, the index here and, and say, well, um, which enemy do we want? And so with lists, everything starts with zero. 
So when you drop the first enemy into that list, you can reference them by a zero here, like so. And then we say return enemy enemy data. So we'll keep it real simple like this because I really want you to understand lists and how lists work. And rather than getting into pulling a random one quite yet, we're close, but we'll, and we'll do that soon. But what we're just going to do in this case is just return the first one. And that is ironically zero. And it'll help us a little bit when we see it in Unity Inspector, I think. So let's jump across here, back into Unity. And we're going to create some data. So we'll come here to data. And the first thing I think we're going to want to do is create some folders here. So we have our enemies. And we have our heroes, which we won't be doing those for a bit. But let's go ahead and make a, a folder to hold them. And finally, let's have a folder for areas. And we'll open up areas and we'll right click, come to create and say area profile. We'll just call this the forest. You can call it whatever you want. We're not even looking at that right now. This is the most important part. <clears throat> is notice that we just have one item here and it says the list is empty because it obviously any list will start out as empty. And let's go ahead and add in Abner. And let's go ahead and add in Rimba. So we have two in our list. Notice the zero here. So this is your proof and a reminder that lists start with zero. If I wanted to have Renba, instead I can put a one in there. I'm saying come to the area profile, look at that list and give me the zero element, which you can see is zero. And then I just return it back. And so we haven't done any, you know, where we return data back, but now we are. And notice we have to define here what data we want to return back. We want to return back enemy data. We've taken this and put it into here. And notice when I mouse over it, it says enemy data. It's able to infer enemy data so I can use var here. Um, if I chose this is completely acceptable. It doesn't break it, but you'll notice that little green thing there, show context action, it says use var. Use var everywhere in method, to method get enemy. It's preferred by, um, it might have some compiler optimizations. It might actually have a performance hit, I don't know, to do it the other way because it's actually having a statically type where this is just feeding. I don't, I, but this is the way I've been told is, is a little more preferable, but either way will work. Um, so this is all we have to do to get that profile back from, and so let's run this and make sure we didn't break anything. So part of this incremental development, I'm kind of showing you what I consider a, a strong practice is you make small changes and then you test them. Make sure you don't break something. It's a lot easier. So I'm going to run this and notice we get Abner, right? And we'll, we'll get that down, da, 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 da. it's always going to be Abner. What happens if I pick these up and swap them? Nothing. It's because, <laughs> uh, and you'll do this yourself. I didn't intend to do this. I defined uh, the get enemy, but notice it's gray. I'm never calling it. So we need to call it. And the way to do that is to come to our enemy script because our enemy script is going to want to call it. And we're going to stick with the same game architecture design we've been doing so far to reinforce how it works. You can build very complex games this way and you can and there's been commercial games built up entirely this way. That said, we'll we'll later in another section later in this course learn how we can better decouple these and not have references here. And um but we're going to continue it for just a little longer. So I'm going to say public area manager Area manager. So I can get a reference to this other game object script, area manager, just like I got reference here uh, to the enemy script is like referenced um, by the button, I guess you'd say. But we can reference scripts in other game objects this way. So I've, I've made it available here. Should I wire it up? You got to remember to do that. But under the enemy spawn now, I can come here and say, um, 
enemy data. And remember, this is where we're setting that. And we were dragging and dropping it before equals uh, area manager dot get enemy. And so we're learning some powerful things here. We have an enemy data proper or field here, enemy data field that holds that profile for that enemy data. Before we were just swapping it out here on the enemy. Instead, what we've done is we've delegated that responsibility for picking the enemy. Who, the enemy doesn't know who the enemy should be. The enemy is just managing the enemy. Could be called enemy manager, might be a better name. Um, but if I come down here um, and look, what we're doing is we're saying, hey, go out to the area manager and call this get enemy script, which we know by mousing over it, we can look at the syntax right there. Notice it shows public enemy data. So I know it's returning back enemy data. And I know the method is get in enemy and I know it's an area manager. Part of good design is that we don't really have to care when we're working on this script how area manager gets its enemy. Right now it's getting its enemy kind of lame. It's just picking the first one out of the list. That's no, that's not really that great, but it, it gets us functionally equivalent to where we were before and builds us towards this better architecture. So before, without this in here, it was always just going to use whatever enemy profile was set on the enemy. Now with this new call out, we're going to grab that enemy from the area manager. And a little trick, I can hold down the control key here in Rider and, and click on this and see what method I'm calling. And just for reminder, here we're looking to the area profile that we have a reference to, and we're grabbing that enemy profile, the very first one, and setting it here. Now what we could do to optimize this just a little more, and especially in this case, we could do something like this. And this will basically just return return it back. We don't need to really store it in here. So we're going to save all this. We're going to come back. <laughs> Before when I was running it, I was like, why isn't it swapping them out? Well, I know why. I figured that out. Click on enemy. Notice we still have our area manager down here. I'm going to Ha, ah, I don't have an area manager. Okay, so I have an area manager here, but if I try to assign it in any way here, there's no way. So I can't get to area manager because it's literally not in the game. It's sitting out here in a script. Here, here it is, but I can't get to it out here from inside of the game. Uh, not this kind of um, script anyway. So let me go ahead and create by right-clicking here an empty game object. So this is pretty common when you're building things out. It just gives you a way to store and better organize things. It doesn't mean that I couldn't add it here to the enemy. I could come here to enemy and I could add the area manager here and we could reference it and use it here. But we've already got so many components on enemy that wouldn't make sense. And, it, and you wouldn't want to put it on the camera or the canvas or anything else or the event system. No one would know to look there for it. So we just make a dedicated area manager um, game object, come here and area, add area manager script to it. Notice it wants that area profile that we created for us. We'll fill that in. And then now we can come to our enemy and drag our area script into here. And notice now when I come here, I can see area manager because it's, it's here um, on our game object. So important philosophies. This has really kind of pulled a lot of things along that if you understand all these concepts we've had to so far with, you know, if statements and how uh, you can organize your code and, and manage it, you're going to be well on your way to making some awesome games. So let's run this now and see what kind of errors we get or if we have any problems, see if it works. Ah, there we got Rinba and, and that's no surprise because Rinba was first in the list. We, we, let's come here to our data, look at areas, click on force, and you'll notice that I had put Rinba first, moved him to the top uh, previously. And because these are scriptable objects and they're persist on disk, it, it remembers that. And so now what we want to do is, obviously this guy has 20 hit points. That's a lot of clicking. And I, I'm, 
I'm tired of clicking, I tell you. But we can kind of cheat a little by coming here to enemy. And notice his current hit point says 20. What if I change it to 2? So you're learning, you know, you should already know this to this point, but you can forget these things that we can change this stuff in real time. So when I click him now, he only has one left because I had changed this to two, so there's only one. Now let's go to our area manager and our area profile, I mean, and let's swap these around. So we get Abner first this time. So I come back to and just click on him and I get Abner. And I'm gonna keep getting Abner. I get one hit point left swap them again, put Rimba first, and we get Rimba. So there you've seen how we've created an area manager, we've created a script for it, we created an area profile, set up one, we only really need one to test what we're testing, we have this list. In this list we added our enemy profiles we wish to use, and of course this can get longer and longer and longer, that's the nice thing about lists, they can just keep going. We created a very simple, I'd almost call it a stub program where it's really not doing what eventually get enemy wants to do because we want um, to get a random enemy profile from the, the list of enemies in area profile. That's what we want to do. We want to grab a random one. Now some um might want it to go sequential like if you wanted an order for the enemies you could certainly do that but um we're just going to do we want to learn how to do random functions because random functions are important anyway you use random functions all the time in games uh, of all different types so we want to we want to use that random function to return an enemy anyway I'm going to end this video here because I think we've accomplished quite a bit, even though it, functionally it functions the same way. It's been refactored so that it's able to now understand lists of enemies, and we've put ourselves on the precipice of actually writing the code that will randomly pull an enemy and return it back uh, to the enemy so we can have as many enemies as we want. It's just a matter of how many scriptable objects we create, how many images we can find which there's an unlimited amount of in, uh, images out there in the world. But you get the idea that we're incrementally building this up. Please, um, I hope you're liking this so far. Um, leave me some comments. Let me know what could I present a little bit differently when this is the full course. A reminder again, this isn't the full course. This is me building out the full course. There will be a lot more editing and changing things like that that I'll do when it's, when it's time for the full course. So. That's it, right there. In and get enemy. And um, with that said, I will see you in the next lecture.